Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either October 20th or 21st, 2020. And I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy if I could buy just one book? Now there's a lot of great books this week that I want to mention to you, so I'm going to try to move through them as quickly as possible, so bear with me. The first two are Halloween themed. With Halloween fast approaching, I was thinking, you know, you might be interested in reading something in the Halloween spirit. So here's the first of two books. It is called Grim Tales of Terror Quarterly 2020 Halloween Special. Now, these covers are pretty great. I'll show them to you while I read the description. You have never seen a Tales of Terror Halloween special like this. Presenting for the first time in the new quarterly format with 72 pages of pulse pounding horror, join Karis the goddess of death, as she brings her own brand of punishment and justice to those unlucky enough to be worthy of her wrath. Don't miss these new tales of terror just in time for the horror season. This book is just perfect for Halloween. Uh, if you're looking for something Halloween themed, this would be great. But so is this second book, which actually is especially interesting to me, and I might just talk myself into picking it up. The book is Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Presents Madam Satan, number one. These covers are also great, and so is this description. Listen. From the world of the hit series Chilling Adventures of Sabrina comes Madam Satan. The Queen of Hell has had enough playing second fiddle to the devil himself and is ready to take matters into her own hands. Will Madam Satan prove herself to be the most powerful being in the underworld? Find out in this terrifying one-shot tale. I don't know, something, it's a short description, but something about it sounds really fun and really interesting to me. It's from Archie Horror, and like I said, it's in the, it's in the Sabrina world, I guess. Um, I've never read any of these books, but this one is particularly interesting to me. It's a one-shot, it's $4, it's a low commitment, it's a low price point. If I can talk myself into buying something um, Halloween-themed and spending an extra $4 on a week where I'm already buying a decent amount of books, I'm going to pick this up, so you might want to consider it as well. The next book I want to mention is Dune, House Atreides from Boom Studios. Um, Dune is one of those sci-fi properties that I think can either be really, really great or maybe not so great. Um, if you're a sci-fi fan, you're probably familiar with Dune, and you might be really stoked to check it out. I think there's a new movie coming out, and the original movie is really great. So I mentioned this as just something new that's coming out that uh, sci-fi fans might be interested in. Uh, I'm low-grade interested in it, but I'm trying to avoid picking up new titles if I can. Um, and this one is no exception. This one is fairly easy for me to say no to. Uh, but you might be interested in it, and it's new this week, so I thought I would point it out to you. Next, we have Stillwater number two from Image Comics. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that my pick a few weeks ago was Stillwater number one, and I'm really glad it was my pick because I really enjoyed issue number one. It paid off for me in kind of the thriller genre. I didn't know exactly how it would, and by the time I got to the end of the issue, I was like, okay, there's some interesting stuff going on here. I'm definitely interested in reading some more of it. And all the hype around Chip Zdarsky so far to me is justified. Uh, it's a little bit too soon to say whether or not it's an amazing series or not, but I know I really enjoyed issue number one. And since it was my pick and issue number two is coming out this week, I definitely wanted to make sure to let you know that it was coming. Next, also from Image, uh, from Image Comics, is a book that I'm actually... I know I've been saying that I'm, not, I'm trying not to pick up new series, but I think I'm going to end up picking this up. It's called The Scumbag, and it is written by Rick Remender. I recently read some Rick Remender in the form of Fear Agent, which I, I got my hands on the first 11 issues of Fear Agent, and I really enjoyed it. He's really good at kind of an adventure slash humor genre, and it seems like the scumbag is exactly in that wheelhouse. Let me read the description for you. The title of the book is Jazz Apple Armageddon, Part 1. The fate of the world rests in the hands of the worst person on it. New ongoing series from the writer of Deadly Class. Rick Remender launches an all-new comedy espionage series, The Scumbag, the story of Ernie Clay Clementine, a profane, 
illiterate, drug-addicted biker with a fifth-grade education. He's the only thing standing between us and total Armageddon because this dummy accidentally received a power imbuing serum, making him the world's most powerful super spy. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, I think you got me. I think you got me. That sounds really fun and really interesting. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fight with every fiber of my being not to make it a continuing thing for me, but I'm definitely gonna pick up issue number one. Uh, Rick Remender's great. The concept sounds great. I could absolutely see this becoming um, something that gets optioned by a Netflix or somebody like that. So I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna hedge my bets. I'm gonna buy the lottery ticket. I'm gonna pick up issue number one. Maybe I love it and I have to keep buying it, um, and uh, or maybe I just like it and maybe I can say no to issue number two. But I'm gonna pick it up. I would recommend it for you as well. But it's not my pick this week. The next book I want to mention is. Spider-Woman number five, or Legacy number 100. Now this is an anniversary issue, um, so of course it comes with lots of really great covers. And that's basically why I'm mentioning it today. I, I don't, I'm not so interested in Spider-Woman as a reader, but I think from a character design standpoint, there's something about Spider-Woman that's really working for me. So these special covers are really great. I mean, there is an Art Germ one that's definitely worth checking out. There is a Momoko one, Peach Momoko one, that's really, you know, it's great. They're all really great. Uh, there's a Scotty Young one, and the more I see Scotty Young covers, the more and more, like, <laughs> into them I am. Um, so there's a lot of great covers. Maybe there's one for you that you want to pick up. That's why I mentioned it this week. It might be a good opportunity to jump on Spider-Woman if you've been looking for that opportunity. The next thing I want to mention are two books that are the final books that are part of the Joker War tie-ins. The first one, the first one is Catwoman number 26. I've been reading uh, Catwoman since issue 23, I think it is. Catwoman's fine. Catwoman's good. I really don't have anything negative to say about Catwoman, but I'm basically picking this up exclusively because it's a Joker War tie-in, and somehow I talked myself into buying uh, all things Joker War. So I'm uh, I'm glad to kind of see that come to an end because uh, I can stop buying some of these books, and I probably will not be picking up Catwoman um, past this issue. But it's out, and I wanted to mention it. In addition is Nightwing number 75, which is another one of the final Joker War tie-in books. Now, this one, more than Catwoman, I've been enjoying as a read. I can't put my finger specifically on what about Nightwing I've been enjoying so much, but I really have been enjoying it. Um, so I'm happy to pick this up, and I'm happy to read it, but the, I have two problems. One... It's a 75th issue, so they're calling it an anniversary issue, which they're marking up the price. It's going to be bigger and all, but I'm triggered, as you have heard before me mention, about um, certain anniversary issues. Okay, maybe do an issue 25 anniversary. Definitely do an issue 50, and definitely do an issue 100, and 200, and 300, 400. But to do like 150 or a 75, to me, just seems like a cash grab, an excuse to charge more money for the book and to, for DC to make more money. I understand why they do it, I just don't necessarily like it. It's not going to stop me from picking up this book, though, because like I said, I have enjoyed um, reading Nightwing recently, and also because I need the Joker War tie-in. But finally, uh, I heard a rumor that Nightwing has been cancelled. So I don't know if it's being cancelled with this issue, or if it's going to be cancelled in a few issues from now. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, let us know if I'm wrong about that, but it is the rumor that I heard. So I probably will stop reading uh, Nightwing with this issue. Um, might be one you might be interested in picking up if you're collecting Joker War tie-ins. Next, um, speaking of Joker War, is uh, Batman 101. Now, this is not a Joker War tie-in. That's over in the Batman title, but it is a continuation of James Tynan IV's run on Batman, which is fantastic. I have been, since I was a little kid, as probably with most of you, a big Batman fan, but I hadn't been reading Batman until James Tynan jumped on it. And I'm so glad, um, I'm basically glad that Punchline became a thing, because Punchline brought me to the title, and James Tynan IV 
got me to stay because he's just so great. Batman is one of those kind of no-brainer titles uh, that are out there that if you're not already reading it, I definitely recommend it. And if you didn't jump on board with the Joker War, this is the beginning of a new story arc. So I highly recommend, if you're not already reading Batman and you're a Batman fan, jump on with issue 101 that comes out this week. And just to mention it, the 1 in 25 variant, I believe is the first cover appearance of Grifter in DC Comics. If you care about that kind of thing, that might be something you might be interested in checking out. But in general, I recommend picking up this book if you're not already reading Batman. But it's not my pick this week. The next book I want to mention is Dark Knight's Death Metal, Robin King. Uh, this is another book I'm really excited about. As you all know, I've been really into the Dark Knight's Death Metal series. And as you also know, if you've been watching all these videos, I'm kind of all in on the Robin King spec. So this book is of particular interest to me. Um, I am very interested in what a, an entire issue dedicated to Robin King is going to give us. I hope it blows him up and makes him the most amazing bad guy ever because, of course, I'd like to see some profitability out of my spec. But that aside, I'm actually interested in this character. I think this character is actually pretty cool. He's really dark and really resourceful. And so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested, from a reader's standpoint, in... Uh, getting more uh, Robin King stories, and of course, this one shot is just that opportunity. So I'm excited about that, but once again, not my pick. So many great books this week. Another great book this week that's not my pick is Venom number 29. Venom number 29. Venom is another one of those titles like Batman and Thor that are kind of no-brainers for me. Donny Cates is so great, and Venom has been really great. And Donny Cates has this really great ability of kind of uh, dripping information to you issue after issue so it's almost like every issue has some kind of moment of like oh cool or oh wow to it uh, and I expect Venom 29 to have the same thing so um, you know it's coming out this week it's a great um, it's a great title Donny Cates is great I recommend picking it up if you haven't already been picking it up but those are all my honorable mentions my pick this week for the one new comic book that I would buy, if I could buy just one book, is Something is Killing the Children, number 11. Now, I laugh a little bit to myself because I, the people who know me really well are watching this video right now and they're laughing to themselves a little bit because they all know what a gigantic fan of Something is Killing the Children I am. It is so good. James Tynan IV and this title is, are so good. But shout out to Simpleman's Comics here on YouTube because they talked about this book over and over and over again. They talked about it so much it kind of wore me down. And around issue number seven is when I jumped on board. And I'm so glad they wore me down um, because I, I'm just so glad I started reading this title. It is so good. In general, I'm a superhero fan in comic books, and I have since I was a kid. But I've started to kind of gravitate more towards indie comic books because the stories there are so cool. And the writing is so great. And the art is great as well, of course. And Erica Slaughter, the main character in Something is Killing the Children, is this far away from being like a superhero. She's basically a superhero. You know, she's super badass and super cool. And I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of her as a character. And like I said, I've really been enjoying this read, this story. Now you may say, Jeff, like, Come on, it's issue number 11. I I'm 10 issues behind. Why am I going to jump on something is killing the children now? I, I just, it I it it's too far gone. I understand that feeling. That's the way I felt around issue number 7. I think I saw issue number 6 come out. And I was like, man, I should start reading that. But no, I, I'm too far behind. I'm going to pass. But then I jumped on board. I'm going to admit something to you. If you are interested in jumping on board, this is a good jumping on point because um, they, it's been kind of a continuous story, but they call the first five issues the first story arc and they call the second five issues the second story arc. This is the beginning of the third story arc, so this will be a good jumping on point for you. But like I said, I feel like it has been a continuous story, so I highly recommend going back and finding issues one through ten. If you can because they are becoming more and more difficult to find. And the price of them on the secondary market has been going up and up and up. Because, uh, as, and this is a point that I'm gonna illustrate in just a moment, 
more and more readers are coming to the book and they're going and they're finding those back issues. So that's causing the demand for the books to go up, for the price to go up, and for the availability to go down. But here's the good news. You can pick up the first 10 issues in trade. There's a trade for the uh, issues 1 through 5 and a trade for the issues 6 through 10. Now, I myself am not generally a big fan of trade of the trade paperbacks. I like getting the floppy, you know, the individual issues because not only do I like getting these great stories, I also like having the potential for secondary market profitability and that you don't have so much in trade paperbacks. So I don't gravitate towards them. But if I was jumping on something that's killing the children right now at issue 11, I would absolutely pick up the trade paperbacks for issues 1 through 5 and 6 through 10 because this you'll be so glad you did. It's such a great read and it's so great to read from the beginning. You can jump in at issue number 11 and you'll get it. You'll get it. it but man, the, the just the to go on the journey from the beginning is so worthwhile. I highly recommend if you don't already have those issues, pick them up in trade and read them and start buying the individual issues with issue number 11 and go on from there. You can even and sit on issue number 11 until you have a chance to read the trades for uh, issues 1 through 10 and just keep buying them individually from there. I highly recommend it. Don't let it be a reason for you not to start reading this book. And the point I wanted to illustrate is that um, I read an article when issue number 10 came out that said that at the distributor level, Something is Killing the Children, issue number 10 had sold better than issue number 2. Now that's pretty remarkable because usually you have really high numbers for issue number one, you see a drop for issue number two, and then a little bit gradual drop until it plateaus, where it finds its, its you know, readership, the people that are reading it month after month after month. But what something is kind of children has done is it was here, and then it dropped for issue number two, found its readership, and then it started going up again. Up to the point where, like I said, issue number 10 sold better than issue number two at the distributor level. Now, that's pretty remarkable, but it's not like mind blowing because once again, you expect a, a pretty significant drop off from issues number one to issues number two. Now, here's what is remarkable. Issue number 11, this issue that comes out this week, at the distributor level, has sold more copies than issue number one. That is unbelievable. Usually issue number ones are higher, are, are um, are ordered at really high numbers. Um, and this one, I think, you know, I don't think it was mind blowing, but I think it did really well. The fact that issue number 11 is sold more at the distributor level than issue number one just illustrates how people are finding this title and they are loving this title. And the, the readership for it is just growing and growing and growing and growing. Why? Because it's really, really good. I really recommend it. I myself will be picking up issue no, um, uh, cover number one, the really great uh, Friesen uh, B cover. Uh, I'll also be picking up the one in 25. I'm not going to be picking up the one and 50 uh, for two reasons. One, I'm actually not a super big fan of this particular cover. And also I don't have a direct line to purchasing it. And I'm, I don't feel like going out of my way to creating that and picking up that book. But I have already picked up uh, the one in 100 version, which is the Department of Truth homage. I'm actually going to uh, send that out to Scott's Collectibles, shout out to you, uh, and get it triple signed by um, Tynan IV, uh, Deladera, and um, Simons, who's the artist from Department of Truth and of this uh, homage cover. So I found a great opportunity to get it triple signed, so I'm, I'm doing that. So that's something I'm a little bit excited about. But more than anything, I'm just excited about the opportunity to continue reading this amazing, amazing story. And I highly, highly recommend that you do the same. And that is why if I could buy just one book this week, it would be Something is Killing the Children, number 11. Ah, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. I, I hope they're uh, entertaining. I hope they're informative. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, if, if Something is Killing the Children is absolutely your pick for the week and you're like, that's a great pick, please put it in the comments. If you're like, Jeff, you're crazy. How did you not pick the Robin King? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what your pick this week would be if you could buy just one book. 
Uh, as always, likes are really appreciated. I want to let you know I've got um, a lot of, uh, I'm going to do more of these videos, but I also have other videos that are coming out. My follow-up to my CGC unboxing nightmare is in the works. That should be coming soon. I also have a couple other video ideas that are coming. So if you're interested in this content and my other content on this channel, I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe guy and of course the notification bell so you don't miss new videos when they show up. Once again, likes are always appreciated. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next one.